Hello, my fam. It is Perez Hilton. And as we are winding down the week, I want to end things with this ongoing Trisha Paytas, Jason Nash, and David Dobrik soap opera. Yesterday, I made a video responding to Trisha's most recent video. And in that video, I mentioned that I had not seen Jason's video because it was deleted. Well, many of you shared links in the comments section to where I could watch it. I did watch it, and I have some final thoughts and new thoughts as well after having watched that video. I have a theory as to why Jason deleted that video. And the main theory that I have is that Jason deleted it because he is a smart man, sensible, and has a good grasp of the temperature and what people are saying. And in my opinion, I think Trisha came off really poorly in that video. It made me dislike her a little bit, but I still like her. And a big takeaway for me is that in the context of who she is and what she does, isolated by herself, I love those Trish solo videos. But seeing her with Jason in a real moment or what was seemingly real or trying to be real, it rubbed me the wrong way, all sorts of wrong ways. Because we all know Trisha is an emotional terrorist, a drama queen, somebody with malignant narcissistic personality disorder. But seeing her in contrast to a 45 year old man, father of two, trying to do right by his girlfriend, trying to do right for his family, she just came across in such an unlikable way. And it made me feel confused because I like Trisha. I mean, even what she was asking of these people, it's ridiculous because she's not dumb and she is a YouTube veteran, okay? Asking David to delete an entire video off YouTube? David Dobrik makes thousands upon thousands of dollars per video. I forget. I mean, I don't even know how much he makes. I know it's at least thousands. His videos each get millions of views. Tens of thousands may be accurate, even more than that, because he might have sponsors in his videos. I don't know how much he makes per video that he uploads, but it's a lot of money. And if he takes that video down, he's not making that much. He's not making any money off of it. None. And he did eventually take the dog down after Trisha requested. But the fact that she even asked that to me seems out of touch and just expecting so much, demanding so much. And I think Jason very well articulated himself that it wasn't his vlog. He said not to do it. David did it anyways. And then Trisha was like, oh, well, I wasn't that mad at you. Uh, you weren't that mad at him. I watched the initial video you made over the weekend and it sure seemed like you were really mad at him, painting him out to be a terrible person, a terrible dad, terrible in every single way. Um, I have a feeling they're going to make it work, but I hope they don't. I hope they don't for his sanity, mainly. Being with Trisha would be good for Trisha. I think he is a good guy. I think it's going to be hard for her to find another good guy, especially if historically she's gravitated towards not good guys. And especially because she seems to sabotage everything. I mean, this is such a pattern. Trisha was on Celebrity Big Brother UK and she quit for no real good reason. She is her own worst enemy. And hopefully, but I'm not expecting it to, this could be a wake up call for her to grow up. Or, or at least learn to pause, okay? As Jason was telling her, she didn't need to make it all so urgent when she called them at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning. 
you know, he wanted to speak to her later and perhaps in person. It would have been better, but no. You know, and I know these people, they don't get their way, they turn into a child. But Trisha's a destructive child. And I don't know. Happiness, I think, is a choice, and happiness takes work. And if she wants to be a happy person and is willing to put in the effort, then she can be. I still think for Jason's sanity, for Jason's family, the best thing would be not to be with Trisha. Honestly, if I was the ex-wife, I'd be very unhappy if he was dating her because she's volatile and she could bring shit. I mean, whatever, whatever. That's not my place, my conversation. Um, but I'm over this officially. <laughs> Unless something real dramatic happens. And one of the reasons I also love Trisha is because, as I mentioned, she was on Celebrity Big Brother. To me, she's more than just a YouTuber. She is a real personality. <laughs> All right, from that couple to another dysfunctional couple, Justin Bieber and his wife, Haley Bieber. Justin and Haley are on the cover of the new issue of Vogue magazine and revealing a lot. In fact, it's Justin's first interview in, I think, two years. I mean... A lot is said, I don't want to be a skeptic, but I will be, and I'll get to that. But first, in their new interview with Vogue magazine, Justin Bieber and Hailey Bieber say how hard married life is. They've been married six months, five months, seven months. Shouldn't this be the honeymoon phase? Shouldn't this be the easiest time in a marriage? They're working so hard to save their marriage or make it function healthily. Now, to me, that is a sign that they weren't ready to get married. They shouldn't have gotten married, in my opinion. But hey, you know what? People get married all the time for all sorts of different reasons. One of the reasons that Justin and Haley got married is because they wanted to have sexy time together. Allegedly, they were not doing it before marriage, according to them in the interview. I'm sure Bieber doesn't count as, um, as, as doing it. <laughs> In fact, he pretty much said so. Uh, let me read the quote. What's the quote? Here we go. Um, and I believe God blessed me with Haley as a result. There are perks. You get rewarded for good behavior. It seems weird out of context. Let me go back. Sometimes people have sex because they don't feel good enough, says Bieber, because they lack self-worth. Women do that and guys do that. I wanted to rededicate myself to God in that way because I really felt it was better for the condition of my soul. And I believe that God blessed me with Haley as a result. There are perks. You get rewarded for good behavior. Well, maybe I thought he meant when I first read it, I thought he meant perks like <laughs> but maybe not. Um, they talk, both of them, a lot about their faith in this interview. They, they posed for photos. I wish them well. Bieber still seems very lost. I mean, even when he spoke about music in this interview, it almost pained him to talk about it. He still does not have a good relationship with music right now. He talked about canceling his stadium shows that he did because he said he was depressed. He talked about abusing Xanax. And he literally said that Haley is 
he chose her. He wanted her to fix him. You know, he says, you know, my life is hard because of this, that, and the other. I'm always traveling. I can't trust people, but she is my constant. And I, while I think that's good and sweet and romantic, the bigger takeaway is he's got to fix himself. It's a lot to ask of somebody to fix you for you. And I don't even know if they can. Can somebody else fix you? Isn't that like what they say about addiction? You can only help those who want to help themselves. And, the, and Bieber seems to be wanting to help himself. So all the positive vibes to Bieber. If you want to read the in-depth article, the whole thing, I've got it up on my website. I will post a link down below so you can read, see, or hear more. All right, on to other related uh, news about couples and musicians. Kanye West, I think I may have mentioned this earlier, or if I didn't, you're hearing it for the first time now. Kanye bought Kim a new $14 million condo in Miami. And then after visiting it, it was a surprise, okay? It was a Christmas gift for Kim. And after visiting, Kim said she didn't want it. She didn't feel safe there. So they are ditching the condo and it's gonna cost Kanye $600,000. He lost his deposit. Which, yeah, that might be chump change for them, but still, to be that wasteful, it's shocking. The, the amount that they spend and waste, God bless them. They must be making it. I mean, they must be making more than tens of, I mean, I don't know. Kim probably made $50 million last year, I'm going to guess. So they can, afford, but then half of that goes to taxes and yada, yada. I don't know. $600,000 is still $600,000. <laughs> uh, speaking of the Kardashians, Rob Kardashian's mother-in-law-ish, even though he never married Black China, Black China's mom, Tokyo Tony, says that her daughter, Black China, should not have custody of Dream Kardashian. Literally, she says, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see something is terribly wrong. And any possible hope that Tokyo Tony had of reconciling with her daughter, poof, eviscerated, gone. She is dead to Black China. I mean, if your parent said your child should be taken away from you, that is a hard place to come back from. In other news, speaking of difficult family dynamics, more about Meghan Markle and finding out about her relationship with her dad. After the dad's heart attack, she did reach out to her dad, texted him, even wrote him a letter. And the dad responded by writing her letter back, how old school, but saying he wanted a photo op with his daughter. This guy is blinded by money. And he played himself, fool. If he would have just been a good dad, she would have taken care of him. I've said this before. The mom, Dorinda, I believe is her name, if she tells Megan, yo, I want to be in London and living in your cottage somewhere in one of the countless rooms that you have so I can help look after my grandchild, I think she would say yes. You know, it's tons of royals. This cousin, that cousin live in the royal houses. Ven acá, chica. Ven acá. Ven acá, saluda a mis amigos. Ay, qué linda. Look at her hair. Look at her hair. Vamos a hacer este video junto. Okay. Moving on. Un besito. Ay, qué linda. Uh, moving on. 
Michelle Rodriguez. Give me this. <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez is chiming in on all of this Liam Neeson controversy. You know, him revealing that he went roaming around looking for a black man who had a, allegedly raped a f family member and trying to get revenge. Well, Michelle Rodriguez says that he is not racist at all. She's worked with him before. And she says uh, that Liam Neeson was in a movie with Viola Davis. And he said, dude, she said, dude, have you watched Windows? His tongue was so far down Viola Davis's throat. You can't call him a racist ever. Racists don't make out with the race they hate, especially in the way he does, with his tongue so deep down her throat. I don't care how good an actor you are. It's all BS. Ignore it. He's not racist. He's a loving man. It's all lies. Michelle Rodriguez probably inhaled a lot of fumes making all of those Fast and Furious movies. <laughs> Um, in happier news, Ben Affleck may be reconciling with his ex, Lindsay Shookus, whom I think is a much better influence than that former playmate that he was dating. A friend, an insider says they have been talking, but they're not officially back together yet. And let's end things with some very positive vibes to Denise Richards, star of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, one of the stars. She revealed in a new interview that her seven-year-old daughter has a chromosomal disorder, which has caused a ton of developmental delays and issues. In fact, she's seven years old and barely speaks. Our health and that of our children is everything. If you've got good health, you've got wealth. Say thank you. Thank you. For watching. The rest of you. Thanks for watching, friends. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, follow, subscribe, share. Bye.